Hey guys, uh, here is the uh, second uh, database I want to go over. Um, so you're going to type U-N-I-P-R-O-T, Uniprot, into Google, and you'll see the first thing to come up is something called Uniprot. Um, Uniprot is a database mainly for proteins with way more detail. Um, it has other things as well, but basically it's a really good tool for learning everything you can about a specific protein. So if we were to just pick something like, I don't know, P53, we'll do the same thing as we did in NCBI. Um, we'll see we have 160,000 different submissions of different P53s of all kinds of things. If we move to, like, let's just say, uh, you know, I don't know, human's a good one. So let's see, if there's, there's human right there. Um, we can just click on this, and what we see is that um, in order on the left, this is all of the different information, and if you click on these, it will kind of like, you know, fast forward down to wherever section it is. So the first part's the function. Um, again, we can, other, we can do other things like blast it and, and, and whatnot and, and download it and do all kinds of things, but let's just basically, um, the first part would be the function, what it's called, um, this is different features it has, and as we go down the list here, we can see now we're into names and taxonomy, what it's called, um, and then we have the subcellular location, so if we scroll over this, we can see that anything blue is where it's found, um, so you can see up here, cytoplasm, nucleus, it's found obviously a lot of different places, which makes sense. It also has isoforms, which is nice, uh, so meaning that, you know, the spliceosomes were alternatively splicing. Um, and also what I like about this is it can tell us whatever publications were found to identify the fact that, for example, this is in the nucleus. So if I click on that, um, once I'm logged in, I can go ahead and um, find this is the main paper that indicated that. So that's what I like about Uniprot also is it has a lot of um, publication. If I want to know what diseases it's associated with, uh, Lyfraumini is a very common one um, for a P53 mutation. And down the line, post-translational modification, expression, interactions, what does this thing interact with? It's, it's pretty awesome how it works. Um, what is its structure? Obviously, we're talking about structure. We typically mean its domains. Um, so let's get down into that. First of all, structure. There's its molecular design. Um, it is a tetramer, by the way, which you wouldn't know from this. But so four of these little subunits stick together to make the functioning protein. Um, and uh, there, there's a different domain. So of the protein, like... This tells me that base pair number 1 to 44 is a domain that's a transcriptional activation domain. So um, this activates um, the transcription. And you can see here that there's other uh, domains here as well, all the way down with a different, uh, um, here's probably a BNA binding domain right there. So this is pretty cool that it can kind of tell you exactly what these different um, domains actually do, which is really cool. Uh, here's all the different sequence of the, of the isoforms. Now remember, this is uh, um, protein, so all these letters are, of course, uh, the amino acids, um, and then proteins that are similar to it. So that's why uh, this is pretty cool. You can do a lot of other stuff with it, but I just wanted to give you kind of a quick overview um, so you can kind of see uh, how this particular database called Uniprot works. And just like I did in the other one, I'm going to give you two uh, little questions to test your ability to use this software.